uh, Sharon had asked me to provide an update on the research grant that I received from the CPFF, and um, I, I think I have some uh, what I think we are exciting updates um, about what we've been able to leverage with those funds. So um, yeah, so I just wanted to provide an update on what we've been doing uh, with regards to this this trial. So um, we've come up with a with a fancy sounding title as people always do. So um, what we what we've done with this is we have sort of a couple of really I think nice assets here at the Firestone Clinic. Obviously a very large interstitial lung disease program, you know, led by Dr. Cole for many years. So I'm I'm sort of the latest addition to that. Um, so we have a very large population of patients, but we also have a very um, well-established and long-standing um, airways program. And in particular, um, we look a lot at um, what we call sputum cytometry. So we're able to collect sputum samples from patients, um, take them to the lab, and then really look at the different cells which reside in the sputum um, to really analyze what kind of inflammation is there. And I'll sort of explain why that's relevant in a few minutes. What we also have is a very strong micro, uh, uh, department that looks at the microbiome of the lung, and we're actually going to leverage this study to look at some of those questions as well. So the clinical question that we really wanted to answer, and I'll skip over some of this. I mean, I'm speaking, I'm preaching to the choir here. ILD is not very good. Um, lots of different problems associated with it. But one of the major problems that our patients suffer from is really severe and intractable cough. Fortunately, not everybody experiences this, but, but a lot of people do. Um, and it's been one of the most challenging symptoms to manage that we've found. Uh, in this condition, no matter what your primary diagnosis might be. So uh, my colleague, uh, Terrence Ho, who's another uh, recent addition to the faculty here, and he really works in the airways department, uh, we went back to our Speedum database, and, and this um, bar graph here shows you, we, we went back and extracted all patients with interstitial lung disease who had Speedum cytometry done. So they cough up a Speedum sample, which we induce with some nebulized saline, and then we send it to the lab. And that picture on the left is just an example. We smear it on a slide, we, we apply some special stains, and then one of our technicians will actually, unfortunately, manually count all the different inflammatory cells that are there. But it's very important because we can actually tease out not only if there is inflammation, but what kind. Um, and um, it's a little bit of a busy slide, I apologize, but I would point you just to this single bar on the far left. And this is all patients who had a diagnosis of some kind of ILD, and we broke them down by subtypes. But we had 173 different patients. And you can see that 50% had some kind of abnormal airway inflammation. So they either had a lot of neutrophils, a lot of eosinophils, but there was a lot of stuff going on in the sputum. Um, so again, this was a retrospective analysis, so a bit limited in the question we could ask, but we showed that it's, it's actually, there's a lot of inflammation going on there. And could this be something we could target to try and improve the symptom of cough? Because we know in patients even without ILD, a lot of inflammation in the airways can contribute and perhaps be a driver of this symptom. So this really launched the idea, could we leverage this technology to really better, not only better understand cough, but perhaps provide some kind of intervention. So what we did was we designed a, a randomized interventional trial, um, and this is open label, so we'll know exactly who's getting what, and we have to do that to be very pragmatic and, uh, and allow for this to be done easily. And what we're gonna do is randomize two groups. So we're gonna take 120 patients total, and we're going to split them up 60 and 60. In half the population, we're going to just manage them as we always would. So they'll go back to the ILD clinic, talk to their providers about their cough, and people will manage it as they traditionally do. In the other half, we're going to take a look at their sputum. So we're going to bring them into the lab, get them to produce a sample, and then take a look at that sample. Um, and we're going to, based on those, the, the sputum results, we'll provide a very specific therapy. And I'll go over those details in a second. So we partner with a company called Vitalograph, and they they create they've um, produced this monitor called the Vitalojack cough monitoring system. So it's this um, adhesive microphone that a patient will apply in a little box here. If you've ever done like a Holter monitor or, or an ambulatory blood pressure monitor, it's very similar. It weighs a couple of pounds, and you stick this big. It's basically just a big microphone you stick on your chest, and it it measures your coughs for 24 hours, which is really important. So it measures it throughout the day when you're sleeping, when you're eating, when you're talking, when you're walking. And what the company does is they take that 24 hour recording and they have a special algorithm that takes out all the non cough sounds. So it, re it removes speed, it removes everything that isn't cough, and it puts it together into this compressed audio file. And then it's analyzed by both the computer and technicians um, to measure cough frequency, severity, and then temporal association. So it's a very, very sophisticated way to not, not look at all the different aspects of cough and, and, and sort of you know, look at how bad it is, but also when it's bad and, and how it might differ between patients. So this is, a, and it's been validated and it's sort of a very sophisticated way to assess how bad the cough is for somebody. So that's gonna be our primary outcome, but we've also decided to tack on a whole bunch of other questions as well. So we're gonna do the traditional cough measures, so questionnaires, uh, and then of course, look at the sputum inflammation, 
And we're also going to look at patients' microbiome. So we, we sent off for a special sort of sequencing, uh, looking at RNA in the sputum to see what kind of um, microbiology is in patient sputum and, and whether that correlates with cough and, and, and that sort of thing. So it's going to be a 16-week trial. So we're going to randomize patients to one group or the other. Everybody is going to get a cough monitor. So all 120 patients are going to get cough assessments at week uh, before they start the study and at the end. Everyone's going to get a sputum induction as well. So not only patients in, who are in the intervention arm, but everybody's going to get a sputum. Those patients we randomize to sputum guided management will will provide a specific intervention, and I'll show you which one. Um, or they'll go back to the clinic and just be managed as per our usual clinical practice. We'll provide the intervention over 16 weeks and then repeat everything at the end and see what kind of difference we've made, if any. Um, not to get too bogged down in details, but based on the kind of inflammation we find in the sputum, where they're going to provide patients with a with a prescription for azithromycin, so a macrolide antibiotic given three times a week, or an inhaled corticosteroid if they have lots of eosinophils, or a combination of the two, depending on the cellular profile. If there's no inflammation, then we'll just manage them as per clinical practice. Um, I'll skip over this one. So this is our this is our oops, it's not finding, sorry, it's funding. Uh, it's a typo there. I apologize. Uh, so this all started with uh, the grant we were very lucky to receive from the, the CPFF in 2021 for $20,000. Using that funding, we were able to um, complete our retrospective study and generate a protocol, and we were awarded uh, $191,000 from the uh, Hamilton Academy of Health Sciences. Um, we used that then to talk to Vitalograph, who are providing in-kind support to provide the cough monitor analysis, which the total value is around $850,000. So we've really expanded the scope of the trial, which I think is really important to be able to provide the power that we, we need to, to get a meaningful outcome. So, so far we've secured funding. We have REB approval as of December. Research contracts are being signed, um, hopefully at the end of this week, and we've hired a clinical coordinator, and we're hoping to enroll our first patient in April of this year with a targeted study completion date of June. So we'll, when we roll through 120 patients for 16 weeks, and then provided the data is you know, fairly clean and we don't have to do too much work, we're hoping to get our first publication, be it an abstract or some kind of manuscript in September of 2025. So uh, it's pretty exciting. This will be the largest prospective study of cough in interstitial lung disease. Um, there's really nobody else has done it in this scope or scale. And we're hoping to answer a lot of different questions. You know, do people have airway inflammation? Does the microbiome have any impact on cough? And then do do interventions like azithromycin or steroids make any difference for a specific subset of patients who have evidence of airway inflammation? So we're, we're very grateful for, for the CPFF for getting us started on this journey. And, and as I said, we're very excited to start enrolling our patients uh, in uh, April of this year, 